Hey yo guys, so a new Mando episode just dropped and we have a lot to talk about, so let's get right into the breakdown. So we start off the episode on Tatooine witnessing a race of some kind before cutting to Peli talking to a Rodian about repairing his speeder. After a bit of negotiating, if we can call it that, the Rodian leaves paying her and we learn that she had the Jawas strip the speeder earlier in order to con the Rodian out of his money. As they're about to repair it though, Mando shows up in his ship, landing in her port. They greet each other as Grogu does a flip out of the ship into Peli's arms, which was pretty cool to see. Mando informs her that he's there on business, and we actually get a mention of Boba Fett and the huts who gave him a hard time back in the book of Boba Fett, so that was pretty cool to see. Mando tells her that he's looking for a replacement memory circuit for IG. Peli asks the Jawas if they could find it or not, and they tell her no. Mando reinforces his statement that he needs to get this droid fixed immediately. He informs her that he needs a droid that'll be able to test the airs of Mandalore in order to ensure it's safe to breathe on the planet, which leads to Peli trying to convince him to buy an R5 astromech. The astromech is a bit skittish as Peli tries to convince Mando of purchasing him. Mando, who is a bit hesitant at first, stating that the droid is falling apart, but Peli reassures him that R5 is in top shape, eventually convincing Mando to purchase him. She reinstalls the droid port on Mando's ship in order for the astromech to join them and bids the two farewell, telling them, May the force be with you. And just as they're heading out, we actually get to see fireworks going off from the Mos Eisley port. So that was actually pretty cool to see. Mando and Grogu arrive on the planet with Grogu looking at it in fright. Mando reassures him, however, telling Grogu there's nothing to fear as the planet once looked green and beautiful. He says that it's home to the Mandalorians and that every Mandalorian could trace their route back to the mines of Mandalore. We also learn that Mando actually never been to the planet of Mandalore and grew up on the moon called Concordia. Now, the Moon of Concordia was actually a place we've seen back in the Clone Wars with Prey Vizsla, who was the leader of the Death Watch, as he used it as a base of operations in its mines for hideout. We learned during the Clone Wars that the moon was turned into a mining base during the Mandalorian Wars, which destroyed its forests, but after the war ended, the mines were abandoned and the forests were able to regrow. This, war this moon is also where warrior Mandalorians were exiled by the new Mandalorians after the war. Mando continues to show Grogu the radar map, pointing to Kalavala, where they met Bo-Katan last episode. He tells Grogu that a Mandalorian has to understand maps and be able to navigate so that they can never get lost. The pair go to land on Mandalore, entering a storm before finally breaking through and seeing the crystallized surface of the planet. We learn that because of the bombs during the purge, the magnetic field has been disrupted, meaning that they'll be unable to communicate with anyone outside the planet, meaning they're on their own. They finally land as Mando has R5 go out to take an air sample in order to see if it's safe to breathe on the planet. R5 is fearful though, but complies, heading out of view. Grogu gets worried, but Mando reassures him that the droids will be okay as they can track him on the ship's radar. The tracker, however, goes out and Mando loses connection with R5, so he heads out to go find him, pressurizing his helmet to protect him from the planet's atmosphere, and tells Grogu to wait in the pot. As Mando searches for him, he sees a cave entrance and heads inside to find R5. As he continues in the cave, he ends up on a ledge and sees the ruins of a Mandalorian city. Whilst looking at it, however, he's jumped by three primal creatures. He fights some Oss, blasting it, but it does nothing, so he has to pull out the dark saber, which frightened them a bit until it weighs him down as he, Mando is still not used to its weight. He makes do, however, taking out the creatures, throwing two off the ledge and slashing the other. He finds R5 knocked down and picks him up and the two head back to the ship with Grogu elated to see them. Mando asks R5 to show him the analysis of the atmosphere and is shown that the air is actually breathable with him stating that Bogotan was right about the planet not being cursed. Mando and Grogu head back into the cave with Mando drawing his blaster in case more creatures show up. The pair reach the ledge where Mando fought the creatures and head down to the ruins of the city. Once they reach the bottom of the ruins, they continue walking forward to what seems like a sewer in search of the mines. As they continue onward, small alligator-like creatures with glowing green eyes snarl and stare at the two. They get even deeper in until Mando finds a buried Mandalorian helmet, picking it up to look at it. It seems to be a trap, however, as a giant spider-like mech traps Mando in a cage and stabs him with a needle that tranquilizes him. Grogu hides as the creature takes Mando to its lair and follows them. The spider mech puts Mando's cage down on some contraption and the pilot of the mech actually comes out looking to just be an eye on a robotic body with tubes all around it. Grogu watches as it walks to Mando, disarming him. It walks off, Grogu seeing this as his chance to free Mando using the force. Unfortunately, it doesn't work as it just sets off the machine of Mando's cage and alerts the one-eyed creature. It goes to attack Grogu, who gets in his pot after Mando tells him to find Bo-Katan and hightails it out of there. Grogu navigates his way through the ruins, getting back to the ship, but not before getting jumped by another one of those primal creatures, 
but Grogu, however, uses the Force to just push it out of the way and gets out of there unscathed. Once he gets to the ship, he points to Kalavala with, on the radar map to signify where he wants R5 to go, and right as they're heading out, the ship gets attacked again but by one of the lizards they saw back in the sewer that has wings, apparently, so it looked like a mini dragon. But they're still able to make it out safely and go to Bogotan. Once they arrive on the planet, though, Bogotan isn't exactly elated to see them and goes out thinking it's Mando in the ship to tell him off. But once she sees it's just Grogu, she asks him what happens, and Grogu just makes sounds of distraught. She gets info from R5's memory banks, and they take her ship to go find Mando. They arrive in Mandalore with Bo-Katan passing by the ruins of the city that was actually once known as Sundari. And Sundari was the main city of the planet back in the Clone Wars and we actually witnessed it get bombed in the Book of Boba Fett. She tells Grogu that it didn't always look like that as they continue onward to save Mando. Once they land, Bo-Katan tells Grogu that she needs him to guide her to find Mando. The pair then head into the cave Grogu escaped, reaching the ruins of the city. Bo-Katan stares into the city, telling Grogu that it used to be beautiful and it was ruled by her, but it's nothing but a tomb now. Grogu looks at her with empathy and the pair just head down into the ruins. As they continue onward, Grogu gets frightened, but Bo-Katan tells him that she can't help Mando without him. So Grogu continues on with her, and Bo-Katan goes to reminisce about working with the Jedi, which is, I think, a reference to Clone Wars when she worked with Ahsoka and Obi-Wan during the War for Mandalore. She continues to talk to Grogu about the Jedi and asks how strong in the Force he is until she stops recognizing an ambush setup and pushes Grogu away and looks to the ceiling, blasting it, causing more of the primal creatures to fall and takes them out with ease. We also get to learn finally that these creatures are called uh, Alamites and that they lived beyond the cities, but since everything was in ruin, they just made this place their new home or the ruins. This makes Bo-Katan kind of wonder what else could have survived if the Alamites were able to. We then cut back to the one-eyed creature setting its machine up, stabbing Mando with a tube that seemed to be extracting his blood once the machine booted up. The machine is stopped though as Bo-Katan enters the lair, blasting it and at the creature. The creature however is able to, to avoid the blaster fire and electrifies Bo-Katan with its staff. She's forced to the ground but notices a dark saber and grabs it, slashing up its staff before stabbing it with the saber. The creature falls to the ground presumed dead. As Bo-Katan goes to check on Mando however, the creature's head detaches and crawls to its mech. Mando warns her as the mech goes to attack, but she's able to fend it off, slicing it to pieces with the dark saber, finally putting an end to the creature. She then saves Mando, who passes out. He wakes up to bo making a soup and asks how she found him, in which she replies that Grogu led her to him. He thanks her for her help and states that she was right about Mandalore not being cursed, which she doesn't really agree as the civilization are in ruins. She tells him to rest and that she'll take him to the ship, but Mandu is still disagrees as he wants to find the Mai's living orders. He hasn't given up. And she chastises him for believing in the story. But he tells her that without the creed, they're nothing, still wanting to find the water. She tells Mando that she'll take him to them, stating that he would never find them on his own. And as we continue to see the trio walking through the ruins of the city, with Mando talking to Bo-Katan about the city, she explains that a lot of their people have were in constant paddle, that the city used to be really nice looking, but their people were in constant battle and because they were always infighting it made them vulnerable to the Empire's attack which is how they lost their planet and it frustrates bo that they were always fighting and couldn't really prevent it. They reach the mines however and Mando states that it looks older to which bo replies that the mines have been there for thousands of years. He asks her if she's ever been to the Living Waters herself and she states that she has back when she was a child taking the creed and goes to talk on about her father for a little bit and how he was proud of her and that he was a good man and, and Mando says you know he would have liked to meet him but we also then learn that he died defending Mandalore in which Mando just stares at her and says this is the way leaving her stunned and Grogu stares at her too but she just shrugs him off once we reach the waters however Mando heads in but before she can she actually reads the script that's on the wall that states from that the mines were once a mythosaur lair that Mandalore the Great had tamed and from this legend the skull of the creature became the symbol of the Mandalorian people now for any newcomers Mandalore the Great was the first Mandalorian and had many battles with the Jedi in his time we don't know a lot more just yet but I'm really hoping as we continue forward uh, we'll get to learn more but after she reads the script, Mando kind of stares at the water for a little bit before removing his cape, jetpack, and weapons, and then begins to enter the water whilst reciting the creed with bo just staring. As he continues reciting his creed, he ends up just suddenly sinking out of nowhere into the water with bo immediately going after him. She's using her jetpack to like help her guide her and get like deeper to into the living waters and we kind of see that these waters are pretty pretty deep as by the time she gets to the bottom he was really deep but she finds him nonetheless at the bottom of the living water and goes up but as she's going up we then see a creature's eye before it's revealed that it was a giant 
mythosaur. There was a mythosaur in the living waters, and it freaks out Bo-Katan for a bit until finally getting out of the water and the two crashing down with her just staring back in the water in just disbelief. And that's where the episode ends. So I gotta say, what a crazy episode. Absolutely awesome. These episodes are getting crazy, and I am super, super excited for next week's episode. Next week's episode is gonna be absolutely crazy. I am hoping we get to see this mythosaur even more. I am looking so, so forward to seeing this creature. Like, this is like the first time we've ever, like, seen a mythosaur, aside from the Forbidden Christmas special that we'll never talk about. But I'm very excited for this. I really wanna see what they're gonna do with this mythosaur, if they're gonna tame it or whatnot. Who knows, maybe Bo-Katan will try and tame this mythosaur. Maybe Mando will try and do it. It's it's up in the air right now. I'm just looking very, very, very forward to next week's episode. We'll see what happens. Who knows? Maybe Mando, maybe they won't even touch the Mythosaur. Maybe they'll just go back to the planet uh, that the other Mandalorians were chilling on with Mando and to reveal that he redeemed himself. And that would be pretty cool. But anyway, nonetheless, great episode. I just am looking very, very forward to it. Uh, maybe this will also spark uh, Bo-Katan's will to like bring back mandalore that could be possibly what happens here but yeah on all honesty very excited for what's going to happen next episode this is going to be awesome so if you guys enjoyed be sure to let me know down in the comments also comment what your favorite part was from this episode and what you hope is going what you think is going to happen and what you hope to see next episode but yeah so anyways guys to be end of the video hope you guys enjoyed if you did be sure to bless that like button as universe subscribe if you enjoy the content on my channel and hey hit that bell notification too as well because i do upload daily and as always, I will see you guys in the next video. DBZ Mando, signing out.